The wall color is an inspiration. It's a beautiful installation. You see, it's a, another eye brings a different look. What people do to design an installation is not always, but often, a real gift to the artist. Look how the shadow works to give movement to the tapestry. I never had an installation that did that. I mean, this is really extraordinary. And the fact that they're out from the wall, I've never seen that before. It, it tells you what the movement is because it incorporates the shadow. And I'm thrilled to see that. They float, yes, really. Yes, yes. You've worked in so many different media. Uh, you've worked in lithography, you've worked in painting, you've worked in sculpture, you've worked in mixed media. What is it about the textile medium in your mind which makes it uh, unique? And why did you uh, want to do these tapestries having done so many other different media? It allowed me to take images that were very much smaller, on which I had worked a lot, and expand them and give them a third dimension because the stitch is third dimensional. If you watch a group of spectators, they seem to have a tremendous desire to touch. Tapestry seems to awake a manual physicality. And I have seen people watching the David and Bathsheba at the Glass Palace in Paris. Where they watch to see when the guards are gone. And then they quickly flip over the corner to look at the back. And by the way, I think many tapestries should be hung in the middle of the room because the backs are exquisite. They are like expressionist versions of the front. And that excitation that is physical in the observer is a characteristic of how people respond to tapestries. I cannot imagine doing litho or looking at a litho without also smelling the ink in a, in a kind of archaic way. That print and the paper is talking to your whole body. And we run the risk of cutting off the sensuality of experience with uh, so much devotion both to television and to the computer. And of course, for me, the tapestry spoke physically as well as pictorially. It's phenomenal that you went for this medium because many people would uh, continue with lithography or painting. It's much easier. It's my curiosity that drives me. It's perfect, works. perfect. But look at this. This is what fascinates me. Yes. See? The double that, shadow. The double shadow. And you look up into that. When I was doing this, I had in mind doing a dynamic piece that would fit in a Mies van der Rohe building. Because like the castles of old, international modern architecture was rather cold. There were there, you walk into a lobby and all these modules of verticals are a very consistent size. And I would say, if I knew one dimension of a module in a modern building, I could tell you how the whole building was laid out. I was interested in tidal waves at the time. And this one, to heighten the effect of the height of the wave, there are actually two horizon lines. As you see, one goes across yellow, the other comes across red, and the wave gets bigger as it comes forward. And the purpose of that was to make the spectator feel that this wave could be overwhelming. I wanted a tidal wave. Shock wave is the name of it in, in French, l'âme de choc. And I wanted the, the wave to reach forward at the top, which is why the green, the red horizon, of course, 
awakens in the spectator some sense of anxiety. And then close up is an earth tone. And these three things give, I believe, a certain sense of the passage of time within the work itself. I had already heard about the Bangladesh waves and we have since had so many tidal waves. I felt that that was a part of a kind of natural discomfort that's been going on all over the world. Maybe today I would be doing hurricanes or tornadoes. Anyway, Lam de Shock carries you forward and has this kind of a curve implicit in the colors. And no matter what you do with this, it's always bigger than you are. And this one over here is a matching model. It's module. It's actually half exactly the size of this, intended for a Mies van der Rohe building where there would surely be a module leading to the elevators. And those uh, horizon lines line up with this. I only made two of them, figuring that I would use them to make a pitch to a corporation. But I was never good at pitches, so I never did that. And I just went on making art. The idea, it comes off a of rubbing of a parquet floor yes. because I felt that the energy of those tree lines, the idea of contrasting wood with water. The, I like the paradox. And this yes. is absolutely phenomenal with these specks of color throughout that you repeat up there. Yeah, I love it. But it took, there were two weavings of it. They took a year each to make. And I drew the the um, tracing for this because they had to know exactly where each of those little dots would go and where their edges would be. I'm referring, of course, to the magnetic pull of the sun on water. It literally is pulling together the wave and, and there is the reflection of the wood parquet yeah. as well. And this was my first tapestry. If you close one eye and look at that spiral, it will move into 3D because I was referring to my work in optics. Just look at that. The eye path of this, you should see it from the bottom just the way you hung it so that that wave is bigger than you are. But again, the reference to wood, to the rhythms of wood as compared to the waves. For me, uh, it's a whole new experience of my own work because this hanging of them is unique. And that's very exhilarating. And I'm already saying to myself, oh, I'm going to do thus and so in the next tapestry. So, <laughs> although it seems unlikely, that at my age I will be able to undertake one. If I have the chance, I have a whole new bunch of ideas which comes from the way in which you perceived it and the way in which it was installed, which is sensational and even much better, even better than in the cathedral at Chartres, which was not, after all, a bad venue. You know, right now, I'm just having a whale of a good time, Krista, for which I thank I'm you. I'm so <laughs> pleased to hear you say that. <laughs>
It's especially significant because we've also ventured forward with a special exhibition, an exhibition of June Wayne's Great Tapestries. It's evidence of the vitality of textile design, of tapestry work still today. It is not an art that is only of the 17th and 16th and 15th century. It's one that is taken on uh, by great artists, has great vitality to it, so we're very proud to be having June Wayne's textiles here on the eve of the opening of our renovated galleries. And I love June's style, and I mean not just her style in art, but her lifestyle, her autonomy, her independence, and her forging of new expressive ways, because she's worked in all the media. We happen to be seeing a wonderful exhibition here of her tapestries, but fundamentally, she's an absolute master of lithography. Wow. So, to have produced these in such a short period of time, they're magnificent, and I certainly hope that eventually they will permanently reside here at the Art Institute of Chicago. May I introduce myself? You sure may. I'm Daniel Walker, the head of the department. Oh, I'm so glad and to meet is, you. This is a little present to me. I'm new here. Uh, so yes, I know the, you are. This show is a present to me. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you <laughs> like it's, it. It's a very nice introduction to the, yes, to the museum it, and the it department. it is for me, too. What's wonderful about her work and this show is the bravery, her passion for science, her passion uh, for her personal experience, like her description early this evening of dealing with the waves that come in off of Lake Michigan and all of those things come together in these tapestries. And so you have the bravery of exploring a medium that at the time no other significant American artist was exploring. That's what's astonishing. It's really difficult to put it into words. You almost have to experience it. But what she does is her, her work transcends the medium within which it is. So it's wonderful you've got some, uh, some lithography here. If you go up close to it and you look at the rhythms of it, and then you stand back and turn your attention to uh, uh, one of the tapestries, you see very, very similar um, uh, rhythms, uh, colors, movements, and yet they're totally different technologies. I mean, we're totally different technologies, working from stone and ink and color to thread, and she manages to get that, um, um, that, that sense of vitality and rhythm despite whatever form she's using, and that's very rare, very, very rare.